Yes, we're gonna ask about Mr. Unlimited. We're gonna ask about uh, <laughs> we're gonna ask about the anthem. I'm assuming. And ask about those kind of things. I guess. How you guys doing? I haven't I haven't seen you guys in a while. It's good to be back to you, with you guys. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we got uh, yeah we got <laughs> unlimited. Um, so anyways, we uh we've been doing a bunch of grounding. We've done it for a couple years now. It's just feeling the ground, kind of. You know, you've been in cleats all day, you know, so that's part of it and part of the healing process, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like only uh, were the defensive guys doing it too, or was it just the offense? Uh, I don't know. I, I, offense, I know, did it. I'm not sure. I think the defense did it too. I, I didn't get to pay attention. We, we always typically do it after we work out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm grounded. You just moved the bed. No, no, no bed, no bed. Say again, bud. It's exciting. It's exciting. We got a lot of guys that are playing really hard. They know the they know the information. Um, the attention to detail is great. It, it's been a lot of fun, actually. As you guys saw today, there's a lot of explosive plays. A lot of things happening, offense and defense. Um, you know, we've got a young group. You know, got a lot of young guys now, and it's new and fresh. Um, and so, uh, it's all always about the work. You know, it's always going to be about the work, and it's always about just the preparation of it all, and making sure that when you go out to practice, you transfer what you learn onto the field. And so. Um, we're doing a great job of really t taking it from the classroom onto the field. How is it working with Sean Time this week? What, what's that process been like adjusting to your answer? Uh, Shotty's been great. You know, I, first of all, I got to give my respects to Coach Bevel. I thought he obviously won a Super Bowl, win the two, won multiple playoff games, won a lot of games. So he's a great coach, and he helped me a lot tremendously. Um, and the unfortunate part about the NFL is, is there's there's always seems to be change, right? And so that's just part of the process, I guess. And so. Um, you know, for for Shadi, for Shadi and I, it's been great. You know, just to be able to you know study a lot together, to talk a bunch. He's he's in the uh, he's in the meeting room a bunch, and on the field, he's very passionate. Um, and we've done a great job. He's done a great job of of of, of kind of putting everything that we know already, and and also adding some stuff that he knows at a, a high high level, and mixing it up, and adding some new stuff. And uh, we're staying on top of it. And, and the best thing is, more than anything, he's a great teacher. He's everybody else, all the players really understand what we're trying to do. And that's great. You know, that's what we need. And we, we need to be uh, one play at a time, one moment at a time, one practice at a time, and, and just see how far we can take it. What's, What's the, the difference, difference between his and Daryl? Uh, you know, I think they're both great. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, I, Coach, Coach Bevel is a Super Bowl winning, you know, offensive coordinator. You know what I mean? It's, you know, uh, so, you know, we, we, people can be nitpicky or whatever. I, I think Shadi, um, you know, the thing I, I'll say this about you know, Coach Schottenheimer, I think that he's he's well versed in, in all different types of offenses. He really understands that he, you know, obviously his dad and learning from that. And then also he's, he's a great studier of the game. Uh, we got tons of clips and we stu study a bunch of all the things I've done uh, really, really well. And also some of the other players that other guys have done. And we're taking all that in and taking all that information, just trying to grow as much as we can. And, uh, you know, I'm embracing that growth and, and everything else. You know, we've had a great, you know, you know start so far to, to uh, I think you know my career and, and our, our you know our, our time here so far with Seattle and it's been amazing you know and think about it and so I think we just want to continue to grow we kind of continue to take off and see how far we can take it. Russell, you alluded to this a little bit, but Pete Carroll has mentioned a bunch of times how hands on Schottenheimer is going to be. What what does that look like for you? Well, he's always in the meeting room with me. Uh, he's always uh, in the QB room and, and then um, he's also uh, I think Dave Dave Canales has always been great too. He's been in there and it's just we got a great room you know and then and then. Um, you know, in terms of the offensive meetings, you know, he's the one that's always, you know, talking and, you know, making sure that everybody understands what their roles are. And we get in and out of the meetings so we can go and, uh, you know, meet with our individual coaches. You know, offensive line, Coach Solari, he's doing a great job. And then, you know, to all the other coaches as well. And so, um, you know, I, I just think that the consistency and the passion and the love for the game is there. And, and uh, you know, and it's, it's been great, you know, so. It hasn't been a drastic change or anything like that. If that's what you guys are asking. I think it's it's been great. I think that you know it's time to just keep moving on and see how far we can how far we can take it. Russell, how much of a shift is the playbook from what you guys have done in the past? Is it, is it completely different? Is the terminology going to have some shift, or, or how big of a change is that going to be? Without saying too much, I, I think that uh, you know it's it's definitely some added stuff for sure. You know, there's definitely more to the plate. You know, and uh, we've always had a lot of information, but it's even more. And um, but that's okay. You know, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready for more and more, and just continue to just uh, see how far we can take it. And I think we're gonna have a great offense. I really do. Uh, I think that um, you know we're gonna try to take off from where we were last year. You know, I thought we played, had a really good offense last year for the most part, and uh, we want to get our running game strong. That, that's the key for us. We want to be great in the running game, and um, and so whatever we can do to make that happen, and uh, that way we can have a great balanced attack. 
But uh, you know, we want to stay explosive. We want to play fast. We want to play. We want to play smart football. Um, protect the football. Make plays. Um, make score a lot of touchdowns. Hopefully. Yeah, it's, it's uh, in terms of the the anthem, you know, it, the thing is, you know, I always said this, you know, uh, you know, I, to me, it's all about love and it's all about that very simply, you know, but the problem is, you know, I think we're focusing on the wrong things, you know, it, there's, there's so many things, you know, no policy is going to fix our problems that we have in America right now. It's not going to fix, you know, all the shootings that are happening on, it's not, it's not, you know, from, it's not going to fix all the racial tension, you know, some policy, you know, for the national anthem, I think we're getting distracted a little bit about, uh, what that means now, you know, I have family that I've served and you know, Sierra's dad And so I, I respect the, the military part of that, you know, and what that means and the freedom of that and what they give us And so but at the same time I think we need to be focused on how we can help and how can we help our communities? How can we help our high schools? How can we help, you know, the, the, the minority communities, you know, african-american communities? I mean, there's so much going on that uh, a simple policy of who's standing up who's not and this and that and, and honestly being a little bit nitpicky it's tough. It's tough because I don't. I don't know if that's the right answer, right? I don't. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. You know. And so, to me, I think that. Uh, I think that we really need to focus on and try to find. Continue. Continue to try to find ways to heal. Continue to find ways to help our communities. And uh, until we do that, we're, we're hurting ourselves. You know, we're hurting ourselves. And so, I think that's what we should be talking about more. You know, that's what we're not talking about enough is how do we make this world a better place? How do we make it safer for our kids? How do we make it our school communities better? How do we, how do we help the inner city community? You know, those should be the, the leading conversations. And, um, and, you know, and I think at the same time, still respecting one another, still respecting you know, our country and then the freedom of that, right? And, and what that means and, and the right for that. So that's, that's what I believe. Yeah, we haven't really, um, we haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. You know, I, just, I think it just came out yesterday or whatever. Right? We haven't had the chance to actually talk about it as a group. I'm sure we will. You know, we typically do. But I, I think that, um, you know, I think we, we, we're always together. You know, I know that in the sense of, you know, we, we want to help change our community, Seattle in itself. I think that, you know, we, we have the right and the, and the, and the I don't want to say it's in the wrong way, but the authority, the power. People look up to us to, um, to make a difference in the communities. I know we have so many guys that do so many great community things. I mean, just seeing some of these guys go to the community service stuff that they're doing at the high schools and inner city communities, and all, that's what we need, and that's what we need to focus on. That's what we need to do more than anything else, and that's how we help heal because we do have we do have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to help, you know, like I said, our communities. Does it feel like the player team goal is getting shut up? Uh, pretty much, you know. I think that's part of it. You know, it's definitely uh, seems that way. Um, but, you know, I, I think that. Like I said, you know, a policy right or wrong is not going to fix our problems, you know. And I think that at the end of the day, it's it's about actually let's have action and make sure that we in our actions that we're actually doing stuff in our communities to make that happen. And, that, and that's not that, honestly, that's not just the NFL. That's not this is bigger than that. You know, this what we're telling what we're telling our you know our society. I think is bigger than that. You know, what we need to be talking about is a bigger issue, a lot a lot of issues too. Got any football? Yeah, it's hard to replace those type of guys. You know, those, those are some Hall of Fame type players, um, guys that are Pro Bowl players, All Pro players. You know, you, you can't necessarily replace those guys. All you can do is rise up to the occasion, and we've always seemed to do that. Um, and we have a lot of they do a great job in the draft. They pick the right guys. We, you know, I, I think the guys who have come in the rookie class has been excited. You know, exciting in the sense that they've been here early, they've been working hard, they they've been prepared. Um, they're studying like crazy. You know, I get to meet with a lot of guys after practice and stuff. So, so it's been great, you know, and so that's what we need. And, um, and like I said, it's always going to be about the work and preparing at the highest, highest level. And um, the part of the National Football League, the part of professional sports, as you guys know, is there's always turnover. There's always movement. And, and uh, what you can do, what you can, the only thing you can do is control, you know, how you prepare. And then, and then ultimately that influences everybody else. And hopefully that affects the, the team and, and rises everybody you know, to the, to the level that we need to be. Um, it's, a it's, a, it's a tough, tough task to be, to be great. You have to prepare that way, you have to think that way, and uh, there, there's no reason why we can't be. How does the emphasis on the run game, how are you seeing that change on the field and in the room, and how does that help? 
Well, I think Coach Solari is doing a tremendous job of communicating what we're trying to do um, and, and how to do it. And, and I think that um, the running backs are doing a great job. Obviously, they're healthy. That's one key, right? You got to have healthy running backs, too. I think also, though, um, you know, the communication of, of the line up front is great and really in tune right now. I think we're doing a tremendous job of that. You know, you got to see once you put the pads on, it's kind of, you know, kind of tricky right now because, uh, you know, you're not in pads and stuff. You know, <laughs> real, real football happens later in, the, in, in training camp. But, um, you know, I, I believe that we're, we're making a, a great leap in that part of it and the communication part of it and, 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 and squaring up on guys and doing the things that we need to do. And that's a key part of our football game, and, and we want that. You know, I, I know that that helps our football team win and helps our football team sustain drives and make big first downs on third and two, third and ones, and, and keep drives alive and make it tough on the defense and, and wear them out and all that kind of stuff. And the play-action game opens up, and everything opens up because of that. And so we want that. We, we, we need that, and we're focused on that. Well, he's done a, a good job. I, I think that, you know, I got to work with him some of this offseason. I had to work with a bunch of guys, actually. And and, uh, and Darbo, he's super smart, first of all. He understands our offense and what we're trying to do. Um, he's, a, he's a really, really, really athletic, great catcher, can go up and get it. He had a good season last year. You know, got, got, you know got, was able to make some big plays for us when needed. Um, and so hopefully, we, hopefully he can step up in a big way. And there's a lot of guys out here. I mean, there's, we got a lot of a great group of receivers, and everybody's respecting one another in the sense of hard work and how to prepare. Um, and so it's going to be a challenging group. Um, but I, I think I think Darbo is one of those guys that can make a lot of plays for us. And that's a great thing. You know, we got so many guys. We I don't know how many receivers we have, but we probably have. I don't. Know, I'm guessing 12 out there that are that all can make plays. And so that's a good thing to have. And and, and OTAs. You know, if you can't have that in OTAs, you get to see what can really happen. Uh, David Moore, um, I got to work with, uh, let's see, I got to work with Tyler, I got to work with, um, let's see here, I got to work with Vinette a bunch, Swoops, um, I said David Moore, right? Yeah. I said David Moore, okay, um, Darbo, uh, let's see who else. Um, Doug, I, Doug, I didn't get to work with that much, but we, we, we get to talk about, about a lot of ball, you know, just <laughs> offline, and, and we understand each other like crazy, so, um, you know, and so it, it was good because, I, you know, it was a whole new crop of guys, you know, really, honestly, I haven't been able to throw that, mu that much to certain guys, you know, it's a new group, and that's okay, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, and they know what they're doing and how to do it, and just throw the ball to the right guy at the right time, you know, and let them catch it and run, and so we've been trying to get a lot of that uh, freshness and all that, you know, all that, you know, uh, not enough work kind of thing, and we're getting it in early in the offseason, and now it's definitely has, has transferred. I think uh, guys like Stringfellow look really good right now. I think I think uh, Marcus Johnson looks tremendous too as well. You know, there's some great ball players. you know, so we're looking forward to what that can be. How does that extra work that you guys do help, or how does it show up here? Well, I think it's, I think it's one, it's the bonding part of it. You know, when you're in season and you've played with a certain amount of guys and for a long period of time, especially, and, that, and like I said, you know, tur the turnover happens, then, you know, the bonding, you, you got to be able to reconnect and, and, and find ways to connect in a new way with certain guys, and every guy's different, right? So uh, I think I think just spending time, you know, going out to dinner, hanging out, you know, doing that kind of stuff, and then obviously getting on the field and uh, throwing the ball around. There's nothing better than that, you know? And so, like I said, it's all about the work. And so when you can connect and communicate in the off season and talk about, hey, this may, if this happens, what you're thinking here, and this is what I'm thinking, this is how I see it, and how to get off this guy's route and how to throw – this type of throw and how to make this play, certain catch and this is the timing of it all because you know throwing the ball is all, a lot about timing you know and how, how do you do that you have to create that you have to imagine you have to imagine that even without defenders there and the great football players they imagine they imagine certain guys and the timing of everything and where to be and and how to make great plays and they believe in that and so you have to create that and you have to experience that when when nobody's there and so when you can do that and experience greatness when nobody's there that's when you, you rise to the occasion I think they're really important. I think they're I think they're extremely important. You know, especially for especially for one. Obviously, we have new offense coordinator in that part of it. I think two. Also, uh, you just love the game. You know, so you get to go out. You know, every time you get to come out here and <laughs> beautiful weather. It's a little cloudy today, but you know, usually it's pretty nice out. Just to come out and just get get to playing football. You know, it's it's, it's one of the greatest gifts in the world. And so, um, you know, I think I think it's it's huge. And you know, I, I'm, I, I, as I can tell, you guys probably saw today. I mean, there's a lot of guys making a lot of different plays, you know, and that's a huge thing. So we want to continue that, and, and making all those plays is huge. So you said that uh, Cage is inevitable, uh, but nevertheless, is all the coaching staff and the coaches shocked? Say, say again? Were you shocked at the coaching staff? Well, I think that, you know, um, shocked, I don't know if it's the, is the 
right word. It, it's uh, <laughs> how do I answer this? It, it's um, it's always it's always tough, you know, when something like that happens because you care, you know, you. You know, Coach Bevel has been a, a huge part of my life, you know, and has helped. I mean, we celebrated some great games, man, and we won a lot of great moments. And even Coach Cable, too, as well, you know, um, you know, and, and just thinking about the success that we've had, you know. And, you know, it, it, you can't get stuck in the change, though. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, that's the unfortunate part about any business, really. I mean, people, people grow and people go away. And then, you know, it's just there's part of, of business just in general. Um, and so – what you can control is, is how you prepare and what you, what you, what's next for, for, for you and the rest of the group and the group that you have. And I think that's, I think that's really important. And so um, I still get to talk to Coach Bev, for example, and I'm still really close with him. But, but uh, you know, I, I'm excited also, too. I, I don't want to, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that, you know, people understand that I think Coach Schottenheimer is going to be phenomenal. I think he's really, really sharp. I think Coach Solari is really, really sharp. And they're ready to fill that role in a big, big way. And we're excited about that opportunity. And we're excited about uh, what that looks like. And there's no way to uh, there's no way to be great if you don't put the work in. And so the one thing I do believe is greatness has you know greatness has you know has no patience. You know it has no patience. And you have to be able to prepare the at the highest level right now. It's not tomorrow. It's not the next day. It's not a week from now. It's not a month from now. A couple years from now. It's right now. And uh, so uh, that's a, that's all we have right now. All right. Anything else, guys? Oh, that's a great question. Um, in terms of the legend, legend show and trace me, I, um, you know, I think the biggest thing was just to be able to be around true legends of our time. I, I had a thought process of, you know, I was like, man, I, you know, one of the things I really want to do is spend one on one time with legends of our time just to learn from them. And one for me to learn, but also for young kids to learn and other people to learn. You know, there's there's no mistaking why people are successful. You know, there's no mistaking that. And, and so. Um, some people think it's luck and some people, you know, honestly, it, it's about, it's about how they prepare what they think through, how they overcome obstacles in certain situations and being able to, to think through certain situations. And so to be able to sit down with, with guys like Jim Brown and talk to him about one of the greatest football player of all time, arguably to sit down with him and talk about football and what that was like and camaraderie and all the things he went through and, and the challenges of being one of the greatest players in, in the world and, and all that and, and being you know, how to overcome, you know, obstacles. And then, you know, talking to Bill Russell, you know, obviously he lives here in Seattle and just to talk to him about what, what championship teams are like and the growing up and the process of that. And, um, you know, talk to Chris Berman, you know, and talk to him and talk to him about his successes in business and life and people and also loss and what that looks like. And so many other guys, Steve Kerr. And so I got to talk to Layla Lee and about her dad, you know, and talking to her about, you know, it's not just about her dad as a woman. It was really about creating her own independence and what her own success would look like. And I, and I love that. Even think about my little sister, for example, you know, I think about my daughter, you know, and, and what that looks like, you know. And so um, talk, I talked to Verdeen. I love music. So, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, and that was not an OJ's reference, but, you know, it was uh, Earth, Wind and & Fire in the sense that, you know, you think about, you know, one of the greatest bands in the world and how do you do that for so many years and his brother Maurice and creating the band, you know. So those type of things uh, to me, you know, I, I learned that there's no mistaking, you know, why people are successful. And you, we have to learn from the, the nuances of why that comes together and why it doesn't work. And so that's been cool for me. We've been having fun with it. It's been fun. Unlimited. Uh, it's just a joke. It's just being silly. Um, but uh, <laughs> me and uh, Janet, our PT, my PT, we were talking, uh, and uh, I don't know how it came up. I, don't, I still don't know how it came up, but it was just started, started laughing about this idea of un, being unlimited, just a thought process. And, and, um, and so anyways, we'll run with it. We'll run with it. We'll have some fun with it. All right. Unlimited. Thanks, guys. Thanks, okay. Uh, Go Hawks. I'll see you guys.